Hey, my name is Alex, and this is lesson 17 for 7th grade math. Uh, for this first portion, you need to use the zero product property to solve. So the zero product property basically means that like, if you're multiplying two things like uh, A and B, and if this is equal to zero, then either A equals zero or B equals zero. So we could use this for a lot of things. Like number one, we're multiplying X minus four and X minus two. So using the zero product property, either X minus four equals zero or x minus 2 equals 0. So basically, you have x minus 4 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. And we know that these are the solutions, both of these. So to simplify it, we could move 4 onto the other side. So it's just x equals 4. And you can do the same for this by moving 2 to the other side. So it becomes x equals 2. So your answer will be x equals 4 and x equals 2. Okay. Number 2 is the same thing, except just different numbers. Using the zero product property, we know that it's either x minus 5 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. So just like here, we could isolate the x on both, both of these. So it becomes x equals 5 and x equals 1 as our answer. Okay, so for this next part right here, we need to find the greatest common monomial factor. So uh, a monomial is just like it's just one term, basically. So this is one term. So just like, you know, greatest common factor, it, it just means like one term. So for one, number one, the greatest common monomial factor would be six. And how you get this is you know that it can't have it can't include a variable because x and y you have x and y but they're separate so we know that that's not possible to have like to have a variable so you look at the 12 and the 42 so 12 and 42 the greatest common factor between these is 6 so this the greatest common monomial factor will be six. And I mean, if you were to pull the six out, then it would just be two X plus seven Y for number one. For number two here, we have four X to the power of four plus 24 times X to the power of three. Here, we don't have two variables like we did on number one. We have X to the power of four and X to the power of three. And x to the power of four and x to the power of three, the greatest common factor between these is x to the common x to the power of three. So we know it's x to the power of three times something. And we have four and twenty-four. And between four and twenty-four, the greatest common factor is gonna be four. Four divided by four is one, and four divided by uh, twenty-four divided by four is just six. So it's gonna be uh x plus six and when we take out the the four x to the power of three for number two okay so for this next section it's basically just combining what we did in the previous sections solving an equation by factoring so first you need to factor by finding the greatest greatest common monomial factor or just greatest common factor Okay, so for number one here, we have 2x squared plus 8x equals 0. So here, the greatest common factor 
is going to include an x that we know because we have x squared and x. And x divided by x is just 1 and x divided by x, x squared divided by x is just x. And between 2 and 8, the greatest common factor is going to be 2. So we could take out a 2x. So it's going to be x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, you're just pulling out the greatest common factor. And here, you could use the zero product rule, or yeah, the zero product property so that it becomes 2x equals 0 or x, x plus 4 equals 0. So you isolate the x on both of these, so it'll be x equals 0 or x equals negative 4. Okay. Uh, number 2 here. We have 6 and squared equals 15 and and if you want to solve an equation you're going to want it to set you want to move everything to one side okay so here it will be 6 and squared minus 15 n because you're moving the 15 n to the other side and the greatest common factor between these is going to be mm, just 3 n we have 6n squared and minus 15n. Okay, so we know that we, we n is part of this uh, greatest common factor because we both we have an n in both of these. So we could kind of look at it as 2 times 3 times n times n. And we have 3 times 5 times n. So if we look here, the greatest common factor will be just 3n. So you take out a 3n, so it'll be 2n, 2n, and then minus 5 equals 0. And using the zero product property, we know that it's going to be either 3n equals 0 or 2n minus 5 equals 0. So it becomes n equals 0 or move the 5 to the other side divided by 2, n equals 5 over 2. Okay, uh, this next part is just the same thing, little different questions. So number se 7, we have 16t squared plus 14t equals 0. Here, uh, you take the greatest common factor, we could factor it out, and we would get 16t squared and 14t squared. We have 8, 2, 7, and 2. So it would be 4 and 2. So the greatest common factor would be 2t. Yeah, so it would be negative 8t plus 7 equals 0. And using the zero, the zero product property, it would be 2t equals 0 or negative 8t plus 7 equals 0. So then it becomes t equals 0 or t equals 7 over 8. Okay, this next part is b squared plus 6b equals 0. You could take out a b, so it becomes b plus 6 equals 0. And using the zero product property, it will be either b equals 0 or b equals negative 6 for number 8. 